Hi everyone, this is Pam Coey. Thanks for joining me in my studio. I, I love having you here and uh, if, you, if you like these videos, please subscribe. So what I'm doing today, I'm continuing to work on this nine foot wide by six and a half foot tall canvas, which had come with clear gesso and I'm really, really liking it. And a quick reminder about my Rex Art frame and panel Halloween giveaway. Thanks to Rex Art for being so generous and allowing me to offer you guys three frames and three panels that are each 12 by 12 inches. The panels are eighth inch Baltic birch and they fit perfectly into these beautiful basswood frames. Just check the link in my description below this video and enter. Today what I'm doing, um, yeah, I've thought a little bit about it. I just, I, I kind of like to live with whatever is happening, whatever stage it's in for a little while until I'm ready to move forward. It's not that I'm thinking, I'm just letting it settle. And I just wanna kind of enjoy the different phases that a painting goes through and let it kind of sink in. And uh, I, the colors I've chosen, black and yellow ochre so far, no big deal. You know, I could have used anything, but I wanted to stay kind of with these warmer colors because that raw canvas, which I really like, and I do want some of that to show by the end of this, I wanted, you know, it's warm, so I, I chose that yellow ochre. Today, um, I think what I'm going to do is come in with some white. I don't know how much, and I may proceed into some of the colors. I'm also thinking spray paint, but I don't know when that's going to happen or if. So who knows? I just wanted to share what's kind of percolating in my mind, and I hope you're doing well, and I hope you enjoy the video. So thanks very much. I'd love your comments below the video, and if you can like the video, it just helps my video to get shared with more people. And if you could share my video, I'd love that too. I really appreciate it. So thanks very much, and here we go. Okay, so I've got my, uh, this is a big thumb marker, uh, white. Comes in all different, you know, regular primary, secondary colors, but I, I'm really just using the black and white. That's what I have. And I've not used the white yet, but this is a 15 millimeter. You charge it just like any marker, you've got to push it down and then the, the felt tip will fill. And then I'm going to add a sense of geometry with this um, painter's edge. You can see how nice and long it is. You have to scale everything up. I'm just using this painter's edge right now. I'm using different parts of the tip. So the end is thinner and then there's the wider tip. So you've got versatility here. Of course, it doesn't all have to be um, rectilinear, but I just thought it'd be kind of fun to have a sense of that in this painting. My favorite thing to ask is like, what don't I have? And that's what I don't have at the moment. It's kind of a no brainer to then inject what I don't have just for variety and contrast. And again, going for this all over pattern because I'm fascinated by it. I usually don't end up having a completely <laughs> all over pattern. It's just a nice thought, you know, it's something I want to try, but then it seems like that doesn't always last throughout the whole painting. I'm liking the combination of both the, what's called a rectilinear geometric line and then breaking away and doing something like esemic writing, which I'm a big fan of. Esemic writing is just something where it's not meant to mean anything. It's meant to kind of mimic what text is, but it, it doesn't necessarily have any meaning at all. It can, because you can be thinking of something and uh, perhaps it's, you know, you are writing something, but it's illegible. But for me, it's part of my mark making vocabulary. So I like to step back a lot and I'm liking what's happening. I'm really liking this marker because it's a little bit transparent, just like titanium white. I have another uh, refillable marker that I'll probably try as well. I'm trying to get this rectilinear thing going throughout the space. Like I don't want to just have it in one place. Again, that all over pattern is what I'm thinking. And you can also, of course, draw more rectilinear lines like this. They don't all have to be curvilinear. So it's not just about big loopy um, letters. It's also about maybe more concentrated marks. It's, it's the variety that I like. Let me know in the comments if you guys have used this kind of marker before. Posca is another great one. But what I found with the Poscas, and you guys can let me know if this happens to you, on some surfaces, it's not as waterproof. And then I have to fix the mark, whereas I tried out the big thumb marker and it is waterproof. So that was a big win for me, discovering that there is a brand of acrylic marker that actually will be 
waterproof. So now I have this uh, Montana marker acrylic refillable. I've used this on other paintings. So you just take the lid off and then you want to charge the tip again. Now this will give me a little bit wider and perhaps a little drip, I'm not sure. So I just, just want to test this out. Yeah, see it's a little bit of a different quality here, which I like. So I'm gonna go for it. Um, I think every tool kind of has its advantages and pros and cons, disadvantages, whatever, however you wanna say it. But um, what I like about this is I can twist it around as I'm going. And what I did on this canvas over here, uh, I was using this and I noticed how I can get some very unusual marks with it and that was kind of fun. So I was like, okay, on this big one, do I want to try something like that, you know? Um, but, whoops, let's see what that's here. Not sure if I can get it to drip, probably not. Get, getting a feel for space and how big this canvas is. There's nothing like using a tool like this and any kind of mark making to really help you get a feel for size, scale. So this, shake it up. Let's see. Here we go. Mm. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know I could do this, but um, at this early stage, it just doesn't matter. Anything goes. <laughs> Hopefully the dogs will not get full of paint. Look up, buddy. Hi, hi. What are you up to? What are you up to? So get these really unusual marks. Of course, they really show up against the black. This is our schnauzer, Vincent. Hi, buddy. Hi. He's got a collar on because he's been, had some sort of um, bug bite and he kept licking it. So he's currently with the collar on. So now that I've tried the big thumb marker and the refillable marker in white, I'm going to use a brush now and hope that I get some drips. I'm not going to use titanium white though. I want it to be a little bit of a different white. So I'll mix another color here, start with white, but then I want it to be a little bit more runny. So here's my airbrush medium. I want to put a little bit of gold in it so that it's not completely white and a little bit of black. And so here's this taupe color and um, this is the plein air brush. A little bit more mass here in some places, just randomly. I feel like this stage of mark making is, is all about letting the inner child out. I think oftentimes as adults, we tend to lose the non-judgmental, just complete joy and freedom of not thinking and playing. So this is all about play. So again, just going over this, this or going for an all over pattern. The only thing I'm really trying to keep track of is like, if I've spread the paint around in a overall way. I'm actually liking how simple this palette is. My intuition is that I love these colors as they are, as simple as they are, because it is fall right now and I, I walk past these this color of leaf every day. These fall colors are really in my head right now. That's maybe what this painting is feeling like to me right now is leaves are falling, randomly overlapping, overlapping colors. So again, just trying to make sure I keep walking around and I'm not trying to concentrate on any one particular area, just keep moving. I am getting the sense of music. And I wonder how many of you feel that way when you do mark making. 
it's a tangle. <laughs> but if I'm thinking of fall leaves right now, then, you know, they don't fall in order. There's a, a randomness to it, which I really like. So, step back. And there it is so far.